You're listening to WCAT Radio, your home for authentic Catholic programming. Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Cynthia Tulin Wilson on my radio show, Author to Author. Today, we're talking with Jared Vercheron, and he has written a quite interesting book called A Catholic Scientist, Prove God's Existence. Um, hi, Jared. How are you? Um, just to, not to correct you, but my first name is Gerard. Gerard. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, that's, Gerard. That's um, way. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how are you today? I am doing fine. Great. In spite of everything. We, uh, we yes. Keep, we keep just pressing. <laughs> yes. Yes. This, this time of the pandemic is difficult. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Um, so what led you to write a book on God's existence? I talk with so many people who say God doesn't exist, and if he does, we don't really know it, or we are not sure about it, so we don't quite know what to say. So mm-hmm. I think it's about time that we are going to tell them the truth. But mm-hmm. what I, I always wonder, why would we ever need to prove that God exists? For, for many centuries, almost everyone in the Western world knew and believed that God exists. Believing God was the norm. Yes. You know, Psalm 14, I always like to say that, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. It was only the fool. But nowadays, the fools have taken over. Nowadays, it's unbelief that has become the new norm. What has yeah. happened? I always wonder, and when you ask people, they say, oh, it's science, science, science. I don't believe that for a second. Maybe some scientists did, because they uh, they go outside their scientific expertise, and then they say, oh, science can prove everything. But unfortunately, science can't prove a thing. Um, that's what I start my book with. A Catholic scientist proves God exists to show that science cannot prove anything. Uh, Science works with hypotheses, and from these follow test implications, and they can test those implications if they turn out to be true. Then they haven't proven much. They have just more confirmation, more certainty, but never final certainty. So I don't buy the story that the scientific revolution caused atheism. What does... Mm. Uh, I I would say the Enlightenment did, with people like Voltaire and that kind of people, and Diderot, and the French Revolution did. They did enormous damage to our culture. So nowadays, we have unbelief is the new norm. And that's what I am fighting in this book. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, so when I look through the uh, index, um, how we can know God exists is one of the first things uh, you talk about, um, So and the proofs of God's existence. So would you like to go through the important points of the book? or? Yes, I think that's a good idea. To, to, okay. I, I will just take one, one proof of God's existence. The other ones are, you know, let's say, varieties of that same proof, I, I would mm-hmm. say. But uh, I think the most popular one is the one that has always been called the argument of motion. That is a a little deceiving. It has nothing to do with motion. It's not about billiard balls that uh, that hit each other. That's motion. But uh, what it really is, it's about causes. Everything that has come into existence has a cause. That is the the basic starting point for Thomas Aquinas. Something cannot make itself exist. Mm. It always has to, then it would exist before it came into existence, which is absurd, which is philosophical nonsense. So when, uh, when Thomas Aquinas uses the rule, everything that comes into existence must have a cause, I don't think anyone can dispute that. Uh, I cannot be my own father. Uh, 
I, I cannot cause myself to exist. Some scientists mm-hmm. think they can. They say, oh, the, the Big Bang explained everything. Yeah, what explained the Big Bang? <laughs> yeah. that, that's always the question. So the, the point of Thomas Aquinas is that the search of, for causes is very legitimate. We have to search for causes. Uh, children have to search for parents. That's their cause. Parents for grandparents. But also at a deeper level, molecules are explained by atoms, atoms are explained by subatomic particles, and we could go on and on. But, and that is the salient salient point, we cannot go on forever. Uh, If if you have an infinite chain of causes, that doesn't make any sense. And mm-hmm. I always say it's like having an endless series of IOUs. Mm-hmm. You end up with no money in your pocket because I, yeah. that is not currency. So how, how do we make it real currency? How do we make that entire chain of courses not float in the air, but give it a foundation to rest on or a beam to hang on from? Those are the images I use in the book. And if you accept that everything that comes into existence must have a cause and that we cannot go on ultimately for endlessly because then we have explained nothing, so we have to come up with a cause that does not need other things for its existence. And that is existence itself, which is what Thomas Aquinas calls the first cause that explains everything. And without the first cause, there are no secondary causes, for they would be hanging in the air, they would float in the air, they would not rest on anything. That is, in, 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 a, sh- in a nutshell, what uh, Thomas Aquinas says in his, motion, in his argument of motion, again, mm-hmm. the argument of causes. Mm-hmm. Does that make any sense? It does. Huh? Um, you know, it makes a lot of sense. So... Um you know, when you, you know, when you think of it, the, of all of those arguments that Thomas made, my own personal favorite was uh, the governor. You know, that every, as far as we know, everywhere we look, the laws are the same. Um, you know, and that just fascinated me, that there has to be yeah. someone who, who did the governing, you know, who came That's up right. with these laws. Mm-hmm. That's right. They, they didn't fall from the sky, you know, to right. put it that way. Yeah, in a way, he, yeah. they did. They, squ- they fell from heaven, but not yes. from the sky. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so anyway, what, what what some people might say, they might say, yeah, but uh, if you prove that God, God is existence itself, a necessary being, the first cause, is that really the God of our religion? As uh, uh, Pascal, Blaise Pascal always used to say, that's the God of philosophers, but not mm. the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He was right on that. But we have to always remember that if God is anything less than the first cause, then he is not worth to be called God. Mm-hmm. So we, we need the, the God of the, the proofs before we can get into the God of faith and religion. And that's what I do in, in let's say, in the second part of my book. I go into the question, why is God invisible, all-perfect, all-powerful, all-present, all-knowing? all good, we can reason that by, uh, by being very faithful to reason and logic, and we can more or less prove that, but that does not prove that our God is triune, that he is God, Father, that he is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It does not explain that he is incarnate, so we need more for that. Where does that come from? Uh, once we accept that God is a first cause, uh, then we can talk about the God of religion. And the God of religion goes much farther than that because God has revealed himself through his son, Jesus. And we know that God exists. That's what we just talked about. So now, if that God exists, then Jesus says, no one knows the Father except through me. And no one knows me except through the Father. They are in unison, and the Holy Spirit guides us to, to do all of that. That's why I always love to start my, uh, my, my lectures and things like that with, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, 
and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. That is an important prayer to always remember. Once we talk to the Holy Spirit, we know he is part of that first cause, but not so abstract anymore, though he has been proven to exist. It's not abstract anymore. It is very concrete. In Jesus Christ, it's concrete. It is what we heard through the apostles, thanks to the Holy Spirit. For they got all the knowledge later on when they didn't understand Jesus. They later on, after Pentecost, they could see what that whole story of Jesus was about. The, the Son of God made man. And because he became man, we know much more than we could know through reason alone. And I think that is an important point to stress. Reason is vital. And if it's against reason, it can't be true. But if it's not reasonable, then it can't be true either. Mm-hmm. True. So that is basically what I do in, in, in my book. I, uh, I show all those parts uh, in, in detail. And mm-hmm. I, I do many more arguments for God's existence, and they, they all confirm each other. Yes. There are more important ones, and some people might say, oh, I, I, that's not my favorite one. Okay, that's fine, as long as you realize that you have to accept at least one of them. <laughs> Let's mm-hmm. put it that way. Yes, I agree. Mm-hmm. So, um, so that, yeah, yeah, sorry. I was, just, I was just wondering, um, in Chapter 15, you have, is God the God of all religions? You know, I teach uh, at Holy Apostles, and I teach uh, interreligious dialogue. So uh, that's, that seems to be a particularly important chapter. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. For, as you, I'm sure, are aware of, uh, there is a lot of confusion about that point. They say, we all mm-hmm. believe in the same God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we all mm-hmm. believe that that is a first cause, but even some people don't even believe that. Poly, uh, uh, polytheists, people who believe mm-hmm. in multiple gods, don't mm-hmm. believe in our God. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I maintain that the, the God of Islam is very different from the God of Judeo-Christian tradition. Mm-hmm. Uh, when uh, Allah, or whatever you call him, is beyond any human comprehension. I know our God is too, but the God mm-hmm. of Islam is not even uh, open to uh, rational access. So if, when, when we, say we all believe in the same God, I, I, I don't believe that for one second. And it makes mm-hmm. all religions the same, vague, unprovable, but there are certain religions that are very weird. I, I, mm-hmm. in, in my book, I give a, a few examples of those, um, the, the, the flying spaghetti monster and, and, and all mm-hmm. that kind of nonsense, mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the Wabianism and the Branch Davidians, Scientology, mm-hmm. which, yes. is, which claims science, but it has nothing to do with science. It actually has nothing to do with God either, because mm-hmm. it's a weird kind of God that goes against the proofs of God existence. And when things go against proof of God existence, we are not talking about the same God anymore. So right. uh, Hindus, uh, Shintos, uh, uh, Muslims, uh, Brahman, we all believe in different gods. And let no one tell us that they are all the same. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they say, nowadays they, they like to say, oh, we, we all know part of who God is. Well, mm-hmm. <laughs> I have news for them. Uh, mm-hmm. We don't even know part of God if we don't start with the proofs of God's existence. That's the only God that we can prove that exists. And mm-hmm. all the other gods are idols, as the Old Testament would say. They are fake gods, and whoever... Uh, uh, reveres them, whoever adores them, is an atheist, basically, or is an, uh, a pagan or a heathen, whatever you want to call them. It doesn't sound nice, but mm-hmm. th- that's the way it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah. I use in, in my book the, 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 the famous story of the, uh, uh, the Raja from India, who is watching a blind 
blind man seeing what an elephant is. And one says an elephant is a trunk, and another one says an elephant is a big ear, and so they go on. And then the Raja says, looking down from upstairs, he says, it's one elephant that you are talking about. And then they use that story to say when Islam says who God is, and when Christians say who God is, they all have only part of the truth. No, 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 no. The Christianity claims to have the full truth. Mm-hmm. And we may not 100% understand everything. The, the mystery of the Trinity, for instance, we, it is understandable. You can explain yes. it to, to other mm-hmm. people, but we will never fully understand it. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's another story. Mysteries don't mean we can't understand them, but we cannot fully understand them. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's my that's my part of the story. Okay, um, so this is uh, this is something that uh, would be very useful to uh, to anybody who wants to know about the uh, proofs of the existence of God because it's approachable, and you break it down for uh, for people in you know you've got fifteen chapters, um, so I think this will be very helpful uh, for any reader. Uh, I'm sorry for any uh, listener who wants to read about the uh, proofs for the existence of God, that this is uh, a nice book to own. Thank you for saying that, and I agree fully. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, okay. You realize. Yeah. So mm-hmm. thank, thank you so much, uh, Cynthia, for, for giving me a chance to talk on your uh, show. Mm-hmm. And I hope it will help many, many people. I hope so, too. Thank you thank so you. much. Okay. Thank you. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. WCATradio.com has a show for every interest. Apologetics, theology, moral living, and more. Know Your Faith. Please look up my show, Know Your Faith, by logging into WCATradio.com. Then click on Fridays, and that's where you'll find me. Know Your Faith, a show hosted by me, Robert Madrigal. And we'll see you at the show. For listening to a production of WCAT Radio, please join us in our mission of evangelization. And don't forget, love lifts up where knowledge takes flight.